Hey everybody, Derek here from Badgerland Birding. Just wanted to talk about kind of a cool bird story that happened fairly recently and uh, go through a couple of articles about it. Uh, so it was a bar-tailed godwit that was about five months old, flew nonstop for 265 hours as it migrated over 8,000 miles from Alaska to Tasmania, which is just an incredible feat for a bird to go that far. It was a little over 11 days of nonstop flight. So this first article here is saying a juvenile bird recently broke the world record for the longest continuous bird flight on his very first long haul journey across the Pacific after it got mixed up, accidentally landed in the wrong place um, is what they said. So the Bartell Godwit, known as it's by its tag number as 234684, flew 8,435 miles or 13,575 kilometers from Alaska to Tasmania. So it says the bird was about five months old, took off on October 13th, and uh, touched down on October 25th after flapping its wings nonstop for 11 days, one and one hour, or 265 continuous hours. That is an incredible amount of time for a bird to fly. And some people might be asking, when do they sleep? How, like, do they eat? Like, how does that work? So a lot of times these birds that migrate long distances, they will build up their food intake and get fat before they make these flights. So then they have that food to kind of burn off as they go. And as far as sleeping, we're going to look at an article in a little bit about um, how birds don't need as much sleep as, uh, you know, humans and other animals, but also how they can actually kind of like turn off parts of their brain to like give them rest and stuff as they go. So it says the previous record holder was another bar cell Godwin, an adult male <laughs> known as 4BBRW which flew 8,100 miles or 13,035 kilometers from Alaska to New South Wales. Um, so that's pretty cool that we have this new record for longest flight. And it's just an insane feat. I mean, 11 days without rest, like without true, you know, sitting down and sleeping is incredible. And these, these birds pretty much have to flap their wings the whole time. So they're not like they're up there just gliding. Um, so they're saying it's unclear if the young guy was alone or not wanted to reach Tasmania. Other articles think the bird probably did have other birds it was migrating with as well. And then um, they say the youngster's wrong turn revealed important new information about bar-tailed godwits. It was previously assumed that they were pushing themselves to the absolute limit during the migrations, but now we've learned that they can go even further. So we'll move on to the next article here. Here's a, I I'm assuming this is, a picture of the bird. Um, young Godwin makes longest known nonstop flight ever in uh, bird watching here. Yeah, so this is the bar to the Godwit here that's um, referring to the bird as B6. So it's kind of interesting we get, you know, the long name in the other article and then having it just known as B6 in this article. So it was tracked by a transmitter. And so it says after fattening up uh, in Alaska, B6 left on October 13th. And arrived on October 24th. Shorebird was tracked using a five gram solar powered satellite transmitter attached to its rump. So you can see it trailing off the end here. That's the transmitter. And yeah, having a US Geological Survey metal band. I'm assuming that's the longer number. And then the uniquely coded alphanumeric leg flag is probably the B6. So um, talking about different, you know, different names for the same bird here. So it says they don't land on water, they don't glide. Um, said Dan, I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name, but that's his last name because I don't want to pronounce it wrong. Um, this is a flapping flight for a week and a half. It's crazy. I think it's just tangible enough that we can appreciate it and have our own minds properly blown. That's very true. Barthel godwits that breed in Alaska annually conduct nonstop migrations, but the movements of juvenile godwits on their first southbound migrations have never been tracked before. So it's pretty cool that we have this data. And it says, thanks to USGS Alaska Science Center for providing this news. So really cool work that they're doing out there. Uh, on dailymail.com, they included this graphic in here. So this is the flight that the bird took. So crazy that it flew all that way to uh, get to Tasmania. So... Yeah, this lists the bird as got it number two, three, four, six, eight, four, which is the same as that first article. Um, but as far as how it actually did this, this is an article in Nature where they actually looked at great frigate birds and uh, kind of the stuff in their brain. So it's titled Evidence That Birds Sleep 
in mid-flight. And then the abstract, they say, many birds fly nonstop for day longer, but do they sleep in flight? And if so, how? It's commonly assumed that they maintain environmental awareness, aerodynamic control by sleeping with only one eye closed and one cerebral hemisphere at a time. However, sleep has never been demonstrated in flying birds. Here, they use electroencephalogram recordings of great frigate birds flying over the ocean for up to 10 days, so similar to what the Godwit did, so that they can sleep with either one hemisphere at a time or both hemispheres simultaneously. Also unexpectedly, frigate birds sleep for only 0.69 HD to the negative one. I'm assuming that's 0.69 hours per day, possibly. Um, indicating that ecological demands for attention usually exceed the attention afforded by sleeping unihemispherically. So it's saying that they can turn off different hemispheres in their brain and also they don't need as much sleep as what I'm kind of getting from this. So in contrast to free birds and humans and other animals, the adverse effects of sleep loss manifest rapidly and accumulate across days of sleep restriction in addition to selection for resistance to the adverse of these results might be explained by differences in motivation and neurochemistry. The small amounts of sleep in flying fruit birds may also serve as restorative power naps that help them forestall the recovery of sleep until they return to land. Determining how they sustain performance on little sleep may provide new perspectives on understanding the adverse effects of sleep loss experienced in humans. It's really interesting stuff here um, about you know how birds can do this. So hopefully you guys found this interesting. I think it's super cool. Let me know just thing in the comments below. Do you think this record is going to stand for a while? Are we going to see it broken? Is it going to be broken by another bar tilt Godwit? Hard to say. Um, excited to see you guys' thoughts, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Bachelorland Birding. Yeah.